The block library for Flutter is a lifesaver for implementing the block pattern in a simple and streamlined way without all the boilerplate. With over 2000 stars on GitHub, I think it's fair to say that this is the most widely used state management package on Flutter. It's amazing to see that it is in constant development from its author. As new features are added though, the old ones are either deprecated or they stop working altogether. In this tutorial, you are going to learn the newest best practices and ways of managing state with this awesome Flutter block library. Hello, welcome to Resell Code, where you are getting prepared for real app development by building better, faster, more stable apps. So subscribe and hit the bell if you want to grow your Flutter coding skills. Not so long ago, I've made a tutorial on the Flutter blog version 0.15 and then I updated it to work with 0.17, but now we are here and the version of Flutter blog library is now at 0.20. In this tutorial, I am going to assume that you have some experience with the Flutter block package and you can get it at least by watching the video from the cart in the corner. So in this tutorial, we are working with the app from the previous one. And just to recap, it's a really simple app which just generates fake weather data. We can enter a city and search for it and it's going to show us Los Angeles 24.6 degrees Celsius is the generated temperature. And be sure to check out the written tutorial from the link in the description where you can also find all of the code written in this video, links to the libraries and also the link to the previous tutorials GitHub repository, which you should clone in order to follow along with this tutorial on the newer version of the Flutter block package. First up, let's make sure that we have the same versions of Flutter block package here in pubspec.yaml file. So you want to have Flutter block 0.20.0 and then also it's optional, but it's good to use Equatable. The newest version is 0.3.0 because Equatable makes equality comparisons in Dart very simple without all of that boilerplate and it's tightly integrated with block. This newest version 0.20.0 is going to reduce the boilerplate even more than before, but even prior to that in version 19, Flutter block got integrated with the provider package. So now it's really like the best state management option out there. But enough rambling, let's get down to the functionality of this uh, new update. So let's go to main.dart and let's first talk about how you can access blocks. It's usually the case that with any kind of an inherited widget, you can only access it from a child widgets build method. So what does that mean for block? Well, over here we have a block provider, which is a simplification of inherited widget, which works with blocks. So in the previous versions, you would provide a block using block provider, you specify which block you want to provide here. We already have a weather block over here, which was created in the previous tutorial on the previous version. But basically weather block is uh, just a standard block, which supports basically just one event, get weather. And over here, it just generates some fake weather data. This is not really all that important for this tutorial. Over here, we are dealing with the flutter block changes because the newest version didn't change anything internally with the block library itself. It only changed the way that uh, you program Flutter UI. So you have a block instance over here in the block provider. And if you want to access it, you have to do it through a child. So what this does is that it creates just a really not all that necessary intermediary widget it just creates unnecessary clutter in your code base. But with the version 0.20 of the Flutter block library, you can now access the block provided by a block provider directly from within the same build method. So what does that mean for us? Well, over here, we can just copy this container actually without the return statement. 
So just copy that or actually cut it out, paste it instead of weather page child as the direct child of block provider. Then we can get all of these methods which were now in the weather page child widget. So we're going to grab all of these and cut them out, paste them below this curly brace. So now it should be all working. We can now just delete the now empty stateless widget because it's no longer needed. And once we save it and go to the emulator, it should work even though we have gotten rid of the intermediary widget and we are sticking the container directly as the child of block provider. So let's check it out, but it's not working. It still writes here that block provider off was called. So here it writes block provider off called with a context that does not contain a block of type weather block. No ancestor could be found starting from the context that was passed to block provider of weather block. And if you know something about Flutter, this is the precise type of an exception which you get when you try to access any kind of an inherited widget from the same build methods build context. So now the question is, am I a liar with what I just told you a couple of minutes ago? Well, you see, no matter how awesome the block library is, it still cannot break the laws of Flutter because accessing a block instance using a block provider as is done here is still not possible within the same level on the widget tree. If you want to use this syntax that you specify the block provider directly yourself, you have to create that pesky intermediary widget. But here comes another thing. With the newest version 0.20 and upwards of the Flutter block library, there is now automatic block lookup. What that means is that now we can omit the block instance. So this thing, we can omit this both from the block listener and also from the block builder. So just delete all of that. We will no longer call block provider off ourselves to retrieve the block instance. Instead, it will be called by the block listener and block builder internally themselves. And because they are separate widgets, which are like one step downwards on the widget tree, they will be able to access the block instance from their build context. But obviously we somehow need to tell these two widgets about the type of the block which they should get. So we have to specify type parameters for the block listener. And the first type parameter is for the block itself, which is weather block in this case. And then the second parameter is for the state because the state is needed. The type of the state is needed over in the listener right here, where we specify weather state ourselves. The same goes for the block builder. And now these two widgets block listener and block builder will retrieve the block instance themselves. So now if we save that and open up the emulator, it now works just as before we can search for a city. So uh, London and search for that and it works just as before. If you are interested in how this works, let's check it out. We are going to open up the block builder definition and go over to its superclass block builder base. Over here, we can see that it is in fact a stateful widget. So it's going to be one level downwards from the ancestor widget, which is the provider, the block provider in this case. So that's why the block provider off call will work if it's called directly from this block builder base. And down here we can see that 
if no block is provided directly, it's going to call block provider of method itself. So that's how this stuff works. It's really nothing magical, but it's just really hard work and determination from the side of Felix Angelov, who is the awesome author of this Flutter block library. Let's now talk a bit more about what it means for the Flutter block package that since the version 0.19, it's tightly integrated with the provider package. We're gonna talk about it here because I feel like it's still not a very well known thing among developers. And of course, there are some pretty cool implications stemming from this integration. The first one is that you do not have to add another dependency to the pubspec.yaml file for using provider since Flutter blog now brings in provider automatically. So if we scroll down and just for the sake of an example, we are going to add a provider here, right? Of course, we first need to import provider. So if we do that, we can do that just fine without actually depending on provider directly in the dependencies in the pubspec file. And now we can use provider from uh, our app. We can use the proxy provider, right? We can use even value listenable provider. And basically everything from the provider package. Another awesome thing with this integration is that it unified the nomenclature for the block and also for provider. Previously, there existed a widget called block provider tree, but now it's called multi-block provider. That's going hand in hand with the names of the provider packages widgets, which have multi-provider in there. And now we have multi-block provider coming from the Flutter block package. And multi-block provider is useful if you want to provide multiple blocks. So you would have providers and inside this list you would specify multiple block providers as usual with the builder method and all of that good stuff. So you would not need to nest multiple providers into themselves, but you would have them just below each other, which is much, much easier to read definitely than just nesting them one into each other. And also this cross package integration of Flutter block and the provider package will hopefully also show that provider is not a substitute for block because provider is really more geared to remove the boilerplate of inherited widget and it's perfectly cool to use in conjunction with block. It's not a replacement, it's rather a help with implementing the block pattern the best way possible. In this tutorial, you learned about the new things you should know if you want to use the newest version 0.20.0 of the Flutter block package because it comes packed with new stuff and with the automatic block lookup feature it reduces the boilerplate even more than ever before. If you don't want to miss more tutorials like this definitely subscribe to this channel and also join the notification squad by hitting the bell button to make sure you grow your flutter skills because here on Reso Coder, I am determined to provide you with the best app development tutorials and resources out there. If this video helped you, give it a like and also share it with other developers who will surely benefit from knowing about the new features in the awesome Flutter block package. Follow me on Instagram, I go under the name Reso Coder everywhere. Leave a comment if you have anything to say and see you in the next video.